Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome back to Donate PP for Medical Physics Campaign Webinar Center. Today, I am pleased to welcome Matthew Joseph, who is the Vice President and Head of Artificial Intelligence Lab at Apart Technologies Private Limited. He is an alumnus of the University of Chicago and a keynote speaker, and he is known for his thought leadership in the area of artificial intelligence and machine learning. He is a keynote speaker in many industry conferences and universities. Matthew has completed his post graduation in data science and marine learning from the University of Chicago and BTEC from the College of Engineering in Toronto. He has more than 29 years of experience in innovations. Today, he will be talking about the role of artificial intelligence in healthcare. As you know, this campaign is to invoke awareness and to generate support for healthcare workers who are fighting the pandemic Corona-19 in the front line. The word medical physics in the campaign represents our profession and safety is the, our commitment towards other healthcare professions. So please feel free to use the question tab to type your questions as the microphones will be muted throughout this webinar. You can also comment, you can also type your questions anytime during the seminar. So I thank Matthew Joseph once again for volunteering this lecture, irrespective of his busy schedule. Dear friends, please join me today in welcoming Matthew Joseph on the stage by giving your full attention, sir. Yeah, thank you very much uh, for the welcome and uh, thank you very much for uh, giving me this opportunity to uh, address all of you. So it's a really, I take it as a great privilege to address all of you. So the, today the topic will be artificial intelligence in healthcare. As you know, artificial intelligence is the hot topic. It's a, it's a topic for the 21st century. Artificial intelligence is the technology for the 21st century. So we are going to talk about how artificial intelligence can be applied in the healthcare, how artificial intelligence can be used to solve the problems which we face in the healthcare sector. So we will talk about that in the next one hour. So first we will understand the what is artificial intelligence and what are the underlying technology behind artificial intelligence. And then we will go through some of the use cases where the artificial intelligence is already used and some of the futuristic solutions where we can use it. So let's uh, get started here. So this is the, when we talk about artificial intelligence, I'm sure that all of you are familiar with artificial intelligence. It, it's covered in the news, it covers in the media, the global media covers, gives a lot of coverage to the artificial intelligence. When we talk about artificial intelligence, these are the some of the things which comes to our mind. First is Tesla, the driverless car, right? So we, we hear about a lot about Tesla, how a machine which is on four wheels, how it is driving, how you can drive that on the road, on the streets, in the middle of the traffic without having a, a, a driver who is controlling the vehicle, a self-controlled, self-driven car, which is driven by, which is artificial intelligence enabled machine on the wheel. So all this, whatever we are seeing here, whether it's a driverless car or the a, a robot, the Alexa, the Siri, the robotic surgery, all these are called the consumer artificial intelligence, which means these are all either a machine or a gadget or a certain instrument which has artificial intelligence inbuilt. So in a factory somewhere in a, in, in a faraway place, somebody who manufactured a car he has built in the artificial intelligence into this car into this machine and we can buy it as a consumer and you can use it so same is the case with sophia the robot it was in the news recently yes, a robot which is artificial which is enabled by artificial intelligence a robot which can interact with humans a robot which can answer your questions it can understand your language and it can respond. It can give you proper answers. It can 
robots can do certain tasks intelligently so that that also has that also is a machine which has artificial intelligence inbuilt right and then if you have a phone smartphone you have an iphone or or, or, or uh, any of the smartphone you have alexa or siri all these personal assistants are there which we are very familiar so you can ask questions and you will get a smart answer you will get a response and you will get uh, intelligent answers from a phone so that also is a consumer artificial intelligence device a device which has artificial intelligence inbuilt and then of course you as uh, the people the professionals in the healthcare sector you are familiar with robotic surgery it may not be familiar everywhere it may not be used everywhere but there are certain areas for special category surgery specific cases where the robots are engaged and there is robotic surgery which happens right so now the question comes so, so if you read, follow the media there are a lot of uh, doubts and questions comes into the mind in our mind so people talk about uh, artificial intelligence a threat to humanity in future are the you know are we going to have a situation where the machines will control humans that's a question and then there are many many people especially the youngsters the young people are talking about uh, machines going to take away your jobs robots or artificial intelligence enabled machines smart machines which are going to take away jobs so these are the old questions which comes to our mind so we will talk about that during this uh, one hour and then also we will talk about the different kind of artificial intelligence so these are all as i mentioned these are all consumer artificial intelligence use cases so these are all different examples of consumer artificial intelligence so we are going to talk about a different set of artificial intelligence where we can use artificial intelligence for our industry so when i take, talk about industry i'm considering healthcare as one of the industry so there are many such industries you know that so there are manufacturing industries there are electronics industries there are banking industry um, um retail industry online retailers like walmart or amazon a lot of industry so all these are different sectors so the insurance industry chemicals petroleum all those are industries so we so we can use this technology so artificial intelligence is a technology we can use that technology in different industries to solve business problems we can use that technology to automate our business processes we can take that technology to for decision management we can use that technology for forecasting our future you can use that technology for your business strategy so that is the in general how artificial intelligence can be applied in the different industries so now let's come to to the healthcare healthcare sector so in our healthcare how are we going to use artificial intelligence in our healthcare so that's what we are going to talk today so as i mentioned initially artificial intelligence it's a technology where you can collect data where you have a big data so we call it as big data so we have a massive data which is collected digitally in a computer so when we talk about data it can be a data which is we call it a structured data which is in a database or it can be digital data which is unstructured data which is there in the social media which is familiar you now we are all familiar with whether it's a facebook or twitter these are all unstructured data right then there can be semi structured data then there there are videos the cctv images videos photos pictures sensor data all these kind of data we can use that and analyze it using computer you analyze that come up with statistical modeling come up with futuristic probabilities and and predict the future and analyze and uh, process these videos and uh, text and audio and images everything and you can come up with patterns and decision you can help in taking decisions so all these are called the artificial intelligence so we can so wherever we have so so how do we use uh, artificial intelligence in the healthcare so the first thing is we need to have data when i said data it should be digital 
So I'm sure that many of us, uh, when we go to the hospital, so as a, if I am a patient from a consumer point of view, from a customer point of view, I come to the hospital and then there will be um, no reports. So you, you have blood reports, you have uh, MRI scans, you have X-ray reports, um, ECG reports. All these are in paper, paper form. And then there will be many, many information which, which a doctor will be collecting during his uh, consulting with the patient, which will be con transferred into a computer. So all this data, we need to convert that into digital data into a computer system. And then once we have that in a big data platform, then we can use the machine learning. We can use the deep learning solutions, neural networks, computer vision, all those. And then we can solve many of the day-to-day -day problems which we face in the healthcare sector. So that's where we are going to apply that. So when we talk about artificial intelligence, it's a, it's a wide umbrella of uh, technology. So it's not uh, something like you, you can take a, it as a piece of uh, uh, artificial intelligence and then plug in somewhere and the machine will work. It's not. It's a computer program where you are processing massive data where you are going to process big data so when i when i said big data it can be terabytes very big uh, size of data images pictures videos lang text uh, audio files all this so using the so the computer has that capability of processing all this using different technology pieces what which what you see here and then help to solve the problems Okay, so I will just quickly run through that so that you don't need to uh, worry about all these pieces, but just to give you um, an understanding of uh, So this just gives you an understanding of what is there in the artificial intelligence and under that umbrella, what are the building blocks? So more than that, you don't need to remember because you are not a technology person. So you just need to be knowing that, okay, these are the some of the building blocks in artificial intelligence, which I can use it for my day-to-day uh, -day problems in a hospital or in the healthcare sector, right? So it's called a deep learning and then the predictive analytics. So these are all statistical models. So you have a huge amount of data, so say for example, millions of patient data, and then you predict using that data and the different uh, demographic data, the patient's medical history of millions of patients, and then you can predict a future patient who is coming, how we can accurately predict his uh, um, disease. So you, know, you predict uh, the future, or you predict a disease using this technology. So that's called the machine learning or predictive analytics. Okay, so here you can, this can help in diagnosis, and it can help in uh, personalized treatment. If a particular patient having certain problems, what could be the best treatment for him? What could be the best medicine for him? So similar patients, millions of patients who undergone similar problems, similar diseases, similar symptoms, and similar responses to the medicines, you take all that data and then apply the, teach the machine. That's called the machine learning. So the machine will learn that and come up with statistical model and come up with probability saying that with all this, uh, symptoms and with all these test results, MRI result, X-ray result, and scanning report, and all this data, and similar to these millions of patients, this patient can have a possibility of a tumor of this category or a cancer of this category. Th that's the kind of recommendation machine computer can come up with. So that's called artificial intelligence using machine learning or deep learning. Then there is something called natural language processing (NLP), which we call NLP. I'm sure that all of you know that computer cannot understand English. Computer cannot understand French. Computer cannot understand Chinese or Japanese or uh, Spanish, right? These are all natural languages. So there is a technology. So this is the technology by which we do write computer programs whereby the computer is able to understand languages, whether it's English or whether it's Chinese or Japanese or Spanish. It is just that you need to write uh, programs and computer programs and to write understand this kind of languages so there is a, it, it, it's not uh, going to be very easy but uh, i'm just giving you a very high level uh, overview of what it happens so in a natural language processing you can have translation so for example from chinese to english or from spanish to english or from italian to english 
the translation so you teach the computer with language data words meanings and all the underlying meanings and everything and with all this enormous data computer understands comes into a situation where computer is able to understand the language and he is able to respond to your questions so when when you speak to a machine that's what happens with the, uh, the sophia the robot or with alexa or siri that is exactly what happens the nlp natural language processing wherein you can speak to that machine and then the machine is able to understand either you know uh, your voice recognize your voice and your accent your each word what is the meaning all that computer is able to understand and then give you the right answer so that's called speech to text or text to speech so in case of chatbots where you are going to uh, chat uh, online um, uh, whether it's in siri or uh, online you go to any online store uh, online uh, shopping where you are uh, you know you get into a customer care and you write a question and the computer is able to so that that's called the chatbot where the computer is able to understand your english or uh, whichever language you type in and then the computer is able to give you the answer using this artificial intelligence technology of natural language processing right so again this is a technology and then uh, other other things are expert systems say for example for specific business requirements say you have a manufacturing you have a car manufacturing plant or you have a petroleum refinery plant for certain processes you can have specific intelligent artificial intelligence enabled machineries then this is planning schedule optimization that's also another uh, sector of area where you especially for the manufacturing industry um, you can you know, use that even for the hospital cases you know you can plan your hospital patients your uh, doctors appointments consulting uh, scheduling uh, you know so you have uh, say, for example if you have 500 doctors on your roles um, from different department different specialization you can use an artificial you can build an artificial intelligence solutions where you can plan the doctor's calendar the appointments based on the his activities his uh, operations or his um, his uh, consulting um, uh, all those you can do the planning scheduling optimization with the intelligent um, you can build that and then again of course the robotics which we already spoke uh, which is again uh, artificial intelligence uh, enabled machines which can do certain tasks it can be robotic surgery or it can be any other uh, task which we can program then there is something called uh, vision so when i say vision it can be images pictures or it can be video cctv videos or it can be any any kind of videos where the computer will process that video and then identify um, the patterns and the person the, the computer will be able to you know, identify the person so for example if you are uploading a photo to facebook facebook will immediately give you and the tag and say that this is the person the facebook is able to identify the person from the your photo or from your video and it will ask you to tag that person that is artificial intelligence so there is artificial intelligence built behind the facebook to identify that your person as a person so this is you can you, know, you don't need to go deep into that just to understand that these are the different areas where artificial intelligence are these are the technologies and where we can use it um then when we if we take a you know, step back into uh, the artificial intelligence so i just want to give you the context of it right so if you look at the humanity the history of humanity which we studied in our uh, uh, schools where when we studied history uh, we know that there was a time period of uh, you know um, agriculture revolution right so there was a time of agriculture revolution many centuries back people were doing the work manually right so people came to that's how the civilization came the nile civilization or the indus valley civilization um, all this and then the, after the civilization the during the agriculture revolution there were people who came and then there was a massive explosive uh, ways of uh, agriculture so 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 what happened was during that agriculture uh, revolution period people were doing the work manually so whether it's farming or anything you do manually right and then there came that a period of industrial revolution which came in the 15th century 17th century period where there were a lot of invention happened the invention of steam power fossil fuels like petroleum um, uh, natural gas electricity all those uh, power, uh, elect, uh, nat uh, no the the uh, the, the, petro the invention of uh, power and then all these machineries were invented 
so what we see all these machineries were invented from the 17th century to 19th century all the automobiles or machineries manufacturing machineries all these things so whatever we are seeing today as humanity the the all the developments of the humanity say from th last thousand years or take two thousand years if you back if you look at the today on the 21st century the civilization it's a result of first agriculture revolution and then the industrial revolution so what are we today see today is a result of industrial revolution and that is because of the artificial power so you have as you see in this picture instead of doing the farming manually there is a machine right there's a machine which is helping the humans to do the farming there so there is art that's called artificial power whether it's an automobile or any machinery um it can be a crane or it can be lift or it can be any machinery earth moving equipment uh, or any machinery which you see so what are we see today whether it's automobile or uh, electronic goods or mechanical machineries what are we use in our kitchen all the equipments everything is a result of industrial revolution and all of them are driven by artificial power maybe electricity some of them may be petrol driven by petrol some of them may be driven by uh, solar energy whichever the the artificial power it is driven by uh, artificial power the machineries so the progress we see today as humanity it's a result of artificial power right so that is the industrial revolution now the next stage for us is the in the future which is coming is the artificial intelligence power so i want to put that in the context so first we had the um uh, industry the, the agriculture revolution where people humans where humanity were doing the task manually and then came the industrial revolution where you have machineries to help you whether it's in the hospital also even in the hospital you know that there are lot of machineries whether it's in a surgical instrument or it can be a x-ray machine it can be uh an mri machine or it can be ecg machine n number of machines so many machines are there even the machineries which you know take a patient from one place to another the trolley that also is a machine right instead of carrying a patient in the hand you are putting a patient on the trolley or on a bed and then you are pushing it with or which is running on a wheel for small wheels and you are carrying the patient from one place to another place that's also a machine that also is artificial it is also powered by artificial power right so the machineries are helping humanity and we reached today in the beginning of 21st century and the future is going to be artificial intelligence so you have a machine which is helping you and you are which is driven by which is powered by artificial power and you add intelligence to that machine then it becomes a smart machine so you have an automobile a car if i had to travel from bangalore to uh, delhi if i start walking it may take two months for me to reach uh, delhi but if i have a car or i have a um, train i can sit in that uh, machine which is driven by artificial power i can reach in one or two days so that's the power of uh, if i sit in an aeroplane i can reach in two hours from bangalore to delhi so again the, that aeroplane is powered and driven by artificial power right so the tesla also is a car which is so you have a car which is driven by petrol and you add intelligence to that car it becomes a smart car a driverless car which is tesla right so that is the future of artificial intelligence so you can it's a technology you can add that intelligence into any machines so when we so what we are seeing here is an mri machine so you already have an mri machine in your hospital which is giving you the a uh, scan report and all this report you add the artificial intelligence to that machine then that machine will be able to analyze that report take decisions on that data and then he will be able to help you all the more in identifying the symptoms identifying the uh, in in uh, um, diagnosing the disease all that what are you are doing so right now you are doing some uh, then surgery using some machine machineries small gadgets so instruments so you add uh, uh, intelligence to those machines whatever you are machines you are using in a, in a, in, a, in your operation theater surgery table you add the intelligence to those machines it is going to help you all the more in doing the um, um, doing the surgery more effectively more efficiently you are sitting in a consulting room you are consulting a patient now you are using some of the machines like x-ray viewer or the stethoscope um, or the 
um, you know, the instruments to check your pulses or all those instruments and machineries which you use, which are powered by artificial power, you add intelligence to those machines, then you will that will help you even more. That will help you to take more better decisions, more accurate decision, right? So that is the that's the, that's the that's where the artificial intelligence is going to help us. So many people ask whenever I speak to doctors and whenever I talk about um, especially the IBM Watson, right? So this is uh, I'm sure that many of you are familiar with uh, IBM Watson. So this is an artificial intelligence uh, software. Uh, from IBM, which is uh, widely used in the healthcare sector, especially for the oncology diagnosis and treatment, yes, and it is helping the physicians and diagnosing the treating uh, and treating the cancer patients. So whenever I speak to the doctors, so many many of them will say, "No, are 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 we going to be in trouble? Right? Is the artificial intelligence going to take over the doctors, and are we going to be jobless? No. So I would say the doctors are not going to be jobless." The, this artificial intelligence is not going to replace a doctor. Rather, the artificial intelligence is going to help a doctor in doing his work more efficiently, more effectively, to, by reducing the effort, by reducing your the mistakes and the errors which you may take, make, and you can reduce all the trial and error which you are doing. So you get all this information, data, everything processed by the computer, which will help your day-to-day -day work. So I would say artificial intelligence will not replace doctors in future, but it will rather replace doctors who does not know how to use artificial intelligence. Maybe after 10 years or maybe after 20 years, I can say, if you do not know how to use artificial intelligence in your day daily job, you may be replaced with a doctor who knows how to use artificial intelligence. So it is just like you are using computer, right? Computer is not going to, um, you use computer, uh, uh, e even a doctor is using a computer in his, uh, no, in, when, when, he, when he is doing the consulting. It's it's a tool to help him, right? So if you are, even if you are a doctor today, postgraduate doctor or um, you have done multiple degrees, and if you, do, if you say, I don't know how to uh, operate a computer, then it's very difficult. You cannot work in a corporate uh, environment where the patients, uh, you, you may have to go open a computer and see the patient details. You may have to enter the patient data. You may have to see the, uh, even the X-ray or the scanning report may come in a computer system where you may have to, you may not get a physical uh, test report or a X-ray report. The report may be uploaded to a computer system. And if you do not know how to operate a computer, then your job may be in problem. Right. Same way, artificial intelligence is not going to replace a doctor, but it will probably replace a doctor after 20 years. It may replace a doctor if you don't know a, 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 a using artificial intelligence solutions. Right. So this is an enabler. This is a tool to help us and make our life easier as a doctor, as a practitioner. This is going to help us. So what is the, what is the um, IBM Watson going to do? So this talks about uh, so what the, this uh, Watson does is it, it takes all this patient assessment data, all the uh, patient data, medical information research, and this will, uh, so you feed all this data and uh, take all the study and uh, all the patient data, millions of patients data from all over the world, and all the studies happening in the medical field, all the published articles, best practices, guidelines, everything you teach the computer and computer understand all this and then evidence panel and then they and after computer analyzing all these when you have a a, a, a patient coming to you say for example like a patient with a uh, you are an oncologist and you have a patient with a cancer symptom coming to you right and then you you uh, the the patient will undergo certain tests and uh, um, you have the, all the test reports and then you will be able the computer will analyze all this report and compare it against the millions of data which the computer has already learned. And it will look for patterns, different patterns, different uh, underlying, uh, the computer will be able to analyze the data more accurately. And then the computer will come up with a recommendation saying that this particular patient with so-and-so symptoms and so-and-so uh, data report, um, uh, test reports, this prob probably this patient is having this disease, whether it's a cancer of this type of cancer, at this stage of cancer, all that. 
and then the final decision is taken by the medical practitioner the final decision is taken by a doctor who is who is the expert so the so the machine is not going to replace a man here the machine is not going to replace a doctor here so the machine will recommend instead of the doctor trying through so how how will a doctor take a decision in a, in a, a particular um, scenario so he is uh, depending on all his, the knowledge which he acquired during his studies so maybe he studied his uh, mbbs and then the md and all the studies he probably he has done um, 15 years of study in the medical field and then he has done another 10 years of practice in the medical field so he is completely relying on all this ex his experience and knowledge and then probably he may refer some articles if he gets some time he may do some studies whenever he gets with his limited time and then based on that information and that experience the doctor is diagnosing a patient and coming taking a decision now instead of that we have a machine which is able to learn millions of such uh, uh, doctors experience millions of patient data millions of uh, published articles and studies and best practices and the research information all over the world and that machine is able to take a more accurate decision based on more data more than a, 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 a human doctor can do and then that doctor that machine is going to give you that recommendation to the doctor and say that this particular patient with all these symptoms and with all these test reports this could be the probable disease and the final decision will be taken by the doctor and same is the case with the treatment so in in a cancer scenario uh, the patient is in a different uh, different stages and then uh, uh, the doctor may try out uh, different options so that sometimes it may go you know, there can be error there can be um you know, diagnostic errors or administrative errors um and then it, it may prolong the the treatment instead of that you uh, depend on this ibm watson or artificial intelligence solution the doc the, the patient the machine will analyze millions of similar patients who were treated for similar diseases all over the world and then the machine and then uh, what are the his uh, with the, your uh, the the uh, data with all the data from of that patient the machine will be able to tell you how this which is the best treatment plan for this patient at this this for this, this disease and that then the doctor will be able to take a better decision a more accurate decision so the doctor can avoid making mistakes the doctor can save time so that is where the artificial intelligence work in the oncology. So what happens is here, it, the computer is able to process large amounts of data. So that is the advantage of a machine here. No human can do that. No, a doctor cannot do that. He doesn't have the time or he cannot remember all the information of millions of patients and all that. So the machine computer has the processing capability to process large amount of data it can be literature it can be videos it can be extra result it can be images mri reports all this data text data or um, different type of data and then the computer can come up with judgment recommendations right so that's how the watson is going to help in treatment okay so this is another uh, another use case where the you can have a remote patient monitoring right so especially in the western countries this is widely you know many, many people are using that in the in the asian countries uh, it is still to catch up so what it does is uh, you know you have a patient uh, remote so he is at home and then you uh, there is an artificial intelligence powered command center that analyzes the data from a home monitoring kit so you have a monitoring kit given to a patient he may be taking maybe an aged patient maybe an old patient with uh, uh, you no know, taking rest at home so you give him a home monitoring kit and then that data that kit will capture all your blood pressure or the different kind of data body temperature all this data and then this kit engages with patients about their medication and vital signs on a daily basis so this kit will monitor your and capture the data for this patient and then it will send this data to a central machine and then the machine will identify what are the risk what are the um, is there any what is the uh, no uh, if if that particular sudden uh, no sudden, that patient suddenly if he is undergoing to undergo any uh, treat, if he need a treatment or if he is uh, going out of uh, 
um, you know, a case where he need to be uh, brought to a hospital, all those things will be identified. At, and so identify at risk patients and then triggering follow-ups. So that kit will trigger a follow-up and then uh, trigger a, um, a notification to the hospital and then you can bring that patient to the hospital for a better treatment by a doctor. So remotely you can monitor the patient. That's what happens. So instead of you don't need to for small diseases or um, especially with old people or uh, people with Alzheimer's or um, uh, blood pressure or may, many such cases you don't need to bring and admit in a hospital where you can monitor the patient remotely and then monitor the data vitals data on a daily basis and notify the doctors accordingly so this is a typical case where the patient had a, a pattern of hypoxia oxygen deficiency so the the so he was treated uh, he was at home and then he was monitored and then uh, the medical guideline of the time said they didn't they don't need an oxygen treatment but then the vital the, this kit which captures the data it analyzed and then triggered saying that this is this is a typical case of uh, uh, remote monitoring where the the people at home they thought that the oxygen treatment is not required for this patient with a particular uh, disease of hypoxia but the computer monitored the pro the, the monitoring program for the senior person and then they are monitored for assess for their risk of falling so in this particular case um, after the the computer notified the the doctor saying that this particular patient need um, oxygen treatment right so it, the symptoms were not visible outside but the vitals uh, data which was collected by the kit uh, analyzed it was analyzed and it was it notified the uh, doctors saying that this particular patient need a home oxygen treatment so the patient was at home but the doctor sitting in a hospital was able to give him the right prescription. And then the, that's another case of uh, um, uh, remote monitoring is uh, for risk of falling, especially for the senior patients at uh, home. Now, the, 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 this kit, particular kit can capture all this data and then predict uh, the, the possibility of falling. You know, the, the patient is, or what is the risk of uh, falling, this particular patient, especially the aged patient or people with... Uh, um, you know, Alzheimer's or any of such uh, cases. And then the machine also will be able to uh, identify the root causes. Okay. And then this is another uh, case. Artificial intelligence can be used in biomedical research. Okay. So this is another example. Uh, so, so we have only one more time. So I'm not going to talk about all the cases where we can use artificial in, but some areas I will quickly run through. Um, based on uh, whatever uh, uh, within the limited time. So this is an, another area where we can use artificial intelligence for biomedical research. So this is a, uh, I'm sure that all of you are familiar with this. Um, so a protein folding problem. So this has challenged researchers and it is, uh, um, so how do you uh, predict the, how an amino acid sequence determines the 3D structure of a protein? So dysfunctions in folding can cause in some cases allergies or diseases such as Alzheimer's, Parkinson's or uh, um, this kind of uh, diseases. So what it does is this artificial intelligence solution is able to uh, predict and uh, determine the possible shape that a string of thousands of amino acid can take and then able to model it more accurately. While the researchers have de devoted almost 40 years to understand the protein folding problem, the computer is able to solve that quickly. So that is in the biomedical research. And then there is another solution which is in the market, which is developed by Google. It's called the Google DeepMind. It's a trained neural network. Um, neural network is again another um, artificial intelligence solution where uh, on a data set of 30,000 non-protein structures to develop alpha, alpha fold. So the alpha fold, so this is the solution, artificial intelligence solution, which can predict the 3D shape of protein structures with much more accuracy than previously possible. So this is how the artificial intelligence is able to solve a research problem a biomedical research problem so they had a competition where alpha fold beat out of 98 entrants predicting the most accurate structure for 25 out of 43 proteins and catapulting ahead of second place team so they had the competition against humans and doctors and the research scientists uh, so who tried to predict manually and then the artificial intelligence uh, google deep mind alpha fold is able to beat the humans by predicting the 3d shapes of protein structures 
and then solving the protein folding um, protein folding problem is a key priority for deep mind so if the scientists can understand protein folding they can better predict the harm improve drugs and design synthetic proteins to fight diseases so that's where it is applied so the using this particular artificial intelligence solution the scientists can they are able to understand the protein folding better and they can predict what is the potential harm, harm and how you can improve the drugs so that's how you instead of spending 30 years or 40 years you can use this artificial intelligence solutions and quickly solve this problem and then another thing is so this is another use case where you can um, use the artificial intelligence for uh, scoring chronic diseases especially so so you have uh, especially with the um, the doctor and the hospital so you know that in any hospital there is uh, millions of over a year it's a hospital is in existence for the last uh, 30 years you have patients re data records um, uh, so many you know, thousands and millions of data is there so you convert all this data into digital data computer data then so you have all these clinical reports and lab test reports uh, patient generated health data all this data and then teach a machine using machine learning and uh, deep learning then you can predict chronic diseases you can predict uh, so uh, use and then use the social factors so for example the demographic data of a patient uh, what is his age what what is the social data all this data along with the medical data and the vital data take all this data and integrate all this into predicting and you can predict the chronic diseases so they will also be eventually be able to provide a quantitative risk assessment to address serious and potentially fatal complications such as um, um, you know sepsis or any of the uh, chronic diseases so you will be able to predict say particular uh, demographic you can uh, say that with all this data these particular people can have in future how this kind of chronic diseases so you'll be able to so what does is the computer does is take these millions of data and analyze it and then come up with patterns how it happened with the previous cases so for millions of patients and then he is able the computer is able to predict the chronic diseases in future and this is another use case you know, the robotic surgery which we already spoke so this is uh, still catching up uh, robotics um, it's uh, still um, at the early stage where uh, you are able to use uh, machines to uh, for you know for complex surgery using minimally invasive approach so there are uh, you know this uh, davinci report this is a robot this is one robot which is uh, widely used for complex surgery and then even for dental implants and hair transplants um, nowadays um, surgical robots are available it is used so what it does is uh, the artificial intelligence based techniques will um, use the even the uh, surgical tools so you can have uh, real time data so when you are doing a surgery for uh, of a patient for five hours or seven hours so you will get all the real time data from all the connected devices and then you will be able to get a real time decisions from the computer recommendations from the computer and the feedback and you will be able to understand how the patient is responding to during the surgery so all these electronic equipments which are connected to the the patient during in, in an operation the surgery table um, you make it art, artificial intelligence enabled and then you can reduce the human error while doing the surgery so instead of manually watching and seeing uh, the computer will be able to detect how the patient is uh, um, undergoing you know, responding during the surgery and the surgeon will be able to um, do uh, limit uh, reduce his human error and the surgery surgeon will be able to do better job of surgery using robotic uh, artificial intelligence enabled machines and then this is uh, um, another case of uh, personalized medicine right so we already spoke about uh, watson for oncology um, so this is widely used so you have uh, in a in a doc in a hospital you have uh, the millions of data sources and the millions of patient data so take all this genetic data electronic health records sensors wearable data from gadgets environmental and lifestyle data so to collect all this data and then uh, for for when a patient is coming to you for a treatment you will be able to the computer will be able to recommend personalized treatment based on his genetic data based on his uh, demographic data based on the 
historical data which the computer has already analyzed so you will be able to um, uh, give him a better treatment um, to avoid any uh, error which can happen so so this will uh, test the predict the occurrence of any patient uh, risk of recurrence for uh, any patient so there is another uh, one called the solution called test named canassus crest uses machine learning to identify a novel combination of biomarkers which play key role in recurrence of breast cancer so in that particular case breast cancer uh, machine will be artificial intelligence enabled uh, machine computer will be able to predict more accurately and then you will be able to personalize treatment by allowing patients with low risk of cancer recurrence uh, to receive less aggressive aggressive treatment um, then this is another area um, again in the drug development right so the machine learning can be applied in all stages of new drug uh, discovery whether it's a clinical trials or uh, target validation um, designing the chemical protein structure all this so you know that you know the uh, new drug uh, invention or the clinical trial takes uh, 10 to 15 years um, just the clinical trial so you can use uh, the computer artificial intelligence solutions to um, expedite it and process these millions and billions of data and process it quickly and the drug development can happen the life life cycle of drug development you can cut down from say 25 years to um, a, a shorter period maybe five years or no, even less so there's a uh, AI enabled uh, um, solution so the millions of um, uh, AI company atomized platform that, that's a solution which is uh, there in the market it's called AtomNet, uses deep learning software to sift through millions of possible molecules in a day or two. And if it is done by um, humans, it will take many months. So instead of uh, spending six months, you have uh, artificial intelligence uh, solution, which is called the AtomNet, which will um, analyze uh, millions of possible molecules and come up with the structure of the drug. And then the software can analyze uh, simulations that show how the potential medicine will behave in a human body. So instead of doing the um, uh, clinical trial and spending say 15 to 20 years for just for clinical trial, the software can, you can simulate the, um, uh, pro, pro, no, how the drug will uh, behave in a human body. Um, it's not completely taking away the clinical trial. Probably if you, instead of spending 20, 15 years for clinical trial, using this artificial intelligence, probably you can cut down to less than five years. So that's what the machine is going to help us. And then the DeepMind and AI enabled solution um, is also making huge progress in this field. Uh, this is another area um, uh, of uh, artificial intelligence. So I will take you one more uh, minute here. Uh, medical imaging diagnosis. So you know that um, you know, all the doctors uh, who are listening will surely know that you get a lot of reports, right? So whether it's X-ray report or CT scan or MRI, all these reports, whether it's uh, digital report, you get it or you get it in a physical form, whether it's a X-ray sheet or, a, or an ECG report paper. So you can digitalize all this and come feed it into a computer and computer will be able to diagnose better. He, computer will be able to machine learning algorithms will be able to analyze these images better and diagnose, uh, especially with uh, abnormalities, um, tumor or cancerous cells, which a human cannot identify manually. So even if you see that images in manual, you may miss it, but the computer is able to um, deep learning or neural network machine, uh, artificial intelligence solutions can diagnose skin cancer uh, or tumors better. So all these millions of data, historical data you give to the machine and the machine will be able to uh, uh, scan through the, the, the data, scan through the reports and medical records uh, and all the vital uh, data uh, records and the medical record which are available in the hospital and then the computer will be able to diagnose better then this is the another solution which is the natural language processing so this is where the you know, the plain english plain english or spanish or japanese or you know any cases so so we know that you know the hospital there are, there will be millions of records so if the hospital is in existence for 50 years or 40 years you have rooms full of reports and uh, you know, different documentation and the research papers. All this you can feed it into a computer, whether it's in a, in, in a plain English or it can be images, it can be text, it can be uh, videos or audios. All this you feed it into a computer and you can have artificial intelligence solutions, natural language processing solution, which can, which will help to analyze that and take that reports, everything, and then 
help in um, um, coming up with solutions, whether it's for diagnosis or taking decisions, all that. So the computer can do that. And then the last one is uh, robotic process or automation. You know that in, in a hospital, there are a lot of administrative processes involved, right? So there are a whole lot of uh, administrative processes involved, um, the, the routine tasks which are done. So using artificial intelligence, robotic process automation, you can automate all this. So you don't need to, um, um, it, it, it's not, a, no, when I say robotic process in, in automation, it's not a robot, it's a software which it, there is no robot involved but it's a computer program which can automate the repetitive tasks, say like uh, prior authorization, updating the patient record, billing the patient, uh, keeping the medical information, keeping the uh, uh, prescriptions, all that uh, routine task, repetitive task, which we can uh, automate using um, robotic process automation. So especially in terms of uh, online scheduling, say you have uh, 100 doctors in a hospital and then you have to schedule the different their appointments their uh, surgeries you are uh, using uh, if say you have um, uh, many uh, you know uh, operations say if you have limited operation theaters or icu so how will you schedule all that you yes, schedule the surgery schedule the doctor's appointments all these are automated uh, it can be automated which are all repetitive administrative tasks which you don't need to waste time on that then the um, billing your claim especially the insurance claims by the patients um, uh, validations implementation of health plan, patient record management, all these are, can be automated in a hospital scenario using robotic process information. Then the another one is uh, facial recognition. So using the image picture, you can, um, even the, you know, a, a patient uh, sitting here, you can, uh, using his uh, video, um, especially the, you can do diagnosis of a rare genetic disorder. So if you, um, using the human with a doctor with his uh, human eyes manually, he will not be able to identify that. So that's a, so this is already there in the solutions which is um, already proven. There were cases where uh, a human doctor is not able to identify the the array of genetic disorder, but in this case, the machines, uh, the computer using facial recognition by image recognition, computer is able to diagnose rare genetic disorder using the patterns so the face patterns and then the eye um, images and then which uh, a doctor will not be able to identify with his human eyes okay so i will take a break here and uh, i will open on the floor for questions over to you dr sajid yes. uh, thank you uh... Thank you, sir, for opening the door of artificial intelligence to us, especially the scientists and clinicians in the field of uh, medicine. And uh, here, uh, you know, as you have stated, uh, it needs a lot of data. However, in case of a situation where we don't have that much of data to interpret or the code the artificial intelligence program, how would we apply a, apply any artificial intelligence program? Because suppose in a clinical scenario, we don't have too many patient data which we have, which we cannot feed into the system. How we are going to, how we will be able to apply the artificial intelligence? In case if that is, if there is a data which is provided by a manufacturer, because it may be possibly sometimes may be totally different from the data of the patients from for that particular genotype or maybe the geographical location. So whether there will be any specialized commissioning procedures needed to ensure that the accuracy is better? Yeah, so artificial intelligence, as I said, it's called data science. So you need the data and it's a big data analytics. So you need data to come up with any kind of prediction or futuristic solutions. But I'm sure that in, in, in a case, uh, a typical case of a hospital, which is in existence for two or three years, you will have enough data of patients. And in many of the software solutions providers, especially with IBM Watson and all, they teach the machine from the data, similar to your kind of hospital. Say if you have a hospital in Delhi, in India, and you are going to implement uh, IBM Watson for that so hospital, you will have, the, they will load the system with the similar kind of hospital, similar demographics, uh, hospitals, patient data, uh, much more similar to that, and then train that machine and then implement it. And, and or, or a period of time, 
uh, you can add more data and then you improve the prediction accuracy so data is needed definitely without data you cannot uh, do it but again the prediction over a period of time um, you capture the data and again the the watson and all uh, it takes uh, more than the patient data it uh, go through it takes the one patient data is just one of that then there will be on, online journals uh, the computer the medical journals research papers research studies um, best practices um, so a whole lot of uh, other information useful information medical information and all collected um, for processing it and uh, data also if uh, the, if the particular hospital doesn't have the data similar kind of hospitals similar kind of patient data which will be taken initially and then over a period of time uh, we accumulate more data and then we improve the prediction accuracy so it's a journey where we need to uh, collect more data and uh, teach the machine so it's called machine learning so you you improve the and iteratively you improve the machine by adding uh, more data and uh, get more predictive accuracy in your prediction okay. thank you so much uh, for answering the question and uh, we have a number of questions from the audience so i will select a few important questions maybe uh, we have a limited time so yeah, the yeah. first so if you, is... if want, yeah if you want to if you want to extend i am i'm fine with that so i leave to you um, oh, thank if you, you want to extend the time also, I am fine. Um, so I am ready to take any number of questions. Okay, then we'll start one by one. So yes. is it possible AI to analyze patient data of CT, MRI, and PET scan images to give clinical report? This is about disease. I mean, yeah. the yeah. question so, so, is whether it can give disease clinical report. Yeah, so uh, the basic requirement for artificial intelligence work is uh, to work is that you need digital data. When I say digital data, the data should be in a computer, computer readable form. So even if it is an MRI report or ECG report or X-ray report, um, you cannot, you need to convert that into a computer. Uh, it can be an image, um, it can be a text or audio or video, anything. As long as it is a digital data, um, the computer can take it and process it and uh, um, use, use that and come up with uh, predictions. Thank you. So, so for example, if it is an X-ray sheet, um, X-ray sheet cannot be fed to a computer, right? So you need to digitize that X-ray into, and I'm sure that nowadays most of the hospital has uh, uh, X-ray instead of in a film, uh, it comes into a software, right? In, in a software system. So once we have that converted into a, um, system uh, digitally, then uh, that data can be fed into artificial intelligence solutions. Okay, thank you. The next question is, is programming skills essential to learn AI? If so, which is a good program for beginners? Yeah, AI, artificial intelligence, uh, I would say uh, if you are a doctor or if you are a research scientist, um, I, I would say you don't need to learn art AI and it's not your field. So the best option is uh, you engage uh, uh, a data scientist or an artificial intelligence expert at technology to solve the, your problem. So you, as a, a domain expert in the artificial uh, in the med medical field, uh, if you have the awareness of where to use artificial intelligence and how to solve or what problem can be solved, uh, that that should be enough uh, with the working knowledge. But and you don't need to really learn the artificial intelligence so but if you are really keen to learn artificial intelligence i would say you need to uh, you can do a post graduation in data science so, so many of the universities all over the world um, starting from stanford or um, um, cambridge university or um, uh, chicago university uh, i had done my post graduation from chicago university and most of the universities in india also is providing um, uh, data science uh, two-year courses three-year courses degree course post graduation and then there is a researchers available. So if you are really interested in doing that, then the minimum thing is you do a post graduation of two year course to start with. And then if you really want to go into the deeper, you can do research in data science and then you can do a PhD in data science and you can become an expert there. But uh, as uh, if you are in the medical field, I won't uh, recommend that because that's not your core area. You can you should be continuing in the uh, medical field, uh, whether you are a medical scientist or a, a medical practitioner or doctor, um, and uh, you get you can you know, go through some uh, online courses or short term courses to get an overview of artificial intelligence and how it can be applied there. So that should be enough for you. So you you will not be able to develop an artificial intelligence solution because that's not your core area and you don't need to. But you get an overview and awareness. That kind of short term courses you can do if you are a doctor. That is what is the best for you. 
Okay, thank you. And who will be responsible to implement this new technology in the healthcare system? And how healthcare professionals prepare themselves to make them compatible with the coming technologies? So it's two questions. The first question is who will be responsible to implement those yeah. new technology in the healthcare yeah. system? Yeah, so 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 this is like any other technology, right? So when the computers came, say, 30 years back um, into the industry, you know, you know that um, you, even in the healthcare sector, the doctors were doing everything manually, right? So you write a, a patient is coming to your place and in your room, and then you write uh, everything on your paper, um, and um, you send him for um, X-ray or scanning, and you get a X-ray sheet, and then you manually view that, and everything is done manually. Now the computers came, so now the question is, who did that? Who implemented that? So whoever is the stakeholder should be doing that. So if you are a hospital, um, if you are if you have your own clinic, then probably you should be doing that. You are responsible to do that. And if you have a if you are working as a physician or a doctor or a surgeon in a big hospital, uh, then the hospital CEO should be responsible for implementing the same way he has implemented computers uh, for uh, in his hospital. He he is using all the computer technology in the hospital the same way. Uh, this is another technology which, uh, as the CEO of a hospital, he should be doing that. And if you are if you are a scientist in a research firm, in a medical research scientist, then probably your CEO or the head of the your department or your head of the institution uh, should be the primary person to initiate this because it has to come top down. Um, otherwise, unless uh, there is uh, ownership and uh, uh, buy-in from the top uh, the, the stakeholders, the ownership. Uh, it's difficult to implement because uh, these are all um, automation or enablers. So unless the uh, CEO of the institution is uh, convinced, uh, things may not work. Yeah, and uh, the second part, I think I may be able to answer because how healthcare, healthcare professionals prepare themselves to make them compatible with the coming technologies. Because it is, uh, you know, it is very inevitable to keep us updated in this challenging technological advancements by increasing our awareness on the you know the technologies and by you know the uh, adapting them to improve the clinical standards so the scientists and researchers as well as the healthcare professionals and leaders has to play an important role in establishing and preparing themselves to adapt those technologies yeah so, so, so it's the, just to, yeah just to add yeah. on to that so so this is another technology, right? So um, it's not going to replace any doctor. Say, say for example, a, a car is a technology, right? So if you are 10, 10 years back or 20 years back, say if you take a 100 years back, every doctor used to walk to his from his home to his uh, clinic. Or 50 years back, most of the doctors were walking from his home to the clinic. Now, every doctor, you, you learn driving, right? So it's a technology you operate it. Um, so, uh, is it mandatory? I would say it's not mandatory. You can still say that, okay, I will not learn driving. I will walk five kilometer and uh, start from my home and uh, go to my uh, hospital five kilometer every day morning and uh, come back five kilometer walk evening. I, I will not say no. Nobody will stop you doing that. But as an intelligent person, as a smart person, when the whole world is driving, when everyone is uh, uh, taking his car and reaching the hospital within 10 minutes, and if you have to walk for two hours, um, after some time, you will realize that uh, you know you are you are you know, becoming obsolete. And the same way, the, when the computers came, um, every now every doctor knows how to operate a computer. He knows how to uh, you know, write a report on a computer, how to type in a key in a report. He, he's familiar with the keypad. Uh, he can open a computer software and then see the reports online. Um, he can look at the patient record online. Um, he's not a computer expert so if you ask him to program the computer he don't need to do that and he's not it's not required also but you should be able to operate a car or you should be able to operate a computer the same way you should have the working knowledge in artificial intelligence in the future otherwise you will become obsolete and you will be out of the uh, you know, competition thank you and the next question is what is the current development in ae for uh, ai for covid 19 detection so far yeah, so COVID-19, I was part of a team which were doing the modeling for um, Kerala government. Um, so the problem with the, the COVID is, uh, um, as I said, uh, this is data science, right? So if you don't have data, 
with the technology you are helpless so covid is a new new disease and that we did not have the data in the initial months right so that's where that's why if there are so many people trying to do the modeling and trying to predict uh, uh, how to you know when to do the lockdown or how to you know what what could be predict the future how the trend uh, the, you know, the, the the how they uh, this will spread all that so many of those predictions went wrong because they did not have enough data because covid is a new uh, a new disease we don't have historical data um, so that's why till now it is it is failed but now so now we have uh, almost 6 months of data and uh, uh, many people are doing the modeling so there were recently there were uh, some news from the you know, iit delhi and uh, iit chennai um, may, many people are uh, doing this so with the data we can come up with more accurate prediction um, and then all the it again depends on the features so the the way covid is expanding or spreading in us will be totally different from what is happening in india because the demographics are different the the, the features or the parameters which are going to influence the uh, the spread of the disease will be different so you cannot really have the, use the same model of us say in india or in africa because the temperature is different the patient the, the people vitals are different there are um, many other uh, environmental factors are there all these data are different so so the, COVID, the we are not so the artificial intelligence is not able to solve the covid situation is because uh, we didn't have plenty of uh, data now that, and, but going forward uh, definitely uh, they will catch up okay the next question is is it ai help us to predict the treatment response during treatment and post treatment especially in the field of oncology yeah so oncology we discussed uh, in terms of ibm watson so ibm watson is primarily for uh, uh, diagnosis and uh, personalized treatment so um, watson with all this data which is preferred uh, already loaded into the machine uh, from millions of patients and then with that uh, when a new patient comes you compare that with this patient and the historical data and he said uh, watson is able to predict more accurately uh, and then uh, predict uh, the best what is the best treatment personalize the treatment so that's all the watson is one of the best solutions for oncology okay so, and, taking, so, so oncology is just one case so even if it is any other disease whether it's uh, um, you know a, a orthopedics or um, uh, any other diseases if you have data and if you have plenty of data uh, it is just that um, you you can apply this technology and uh, come up with uh, um, solutions to solve that problems so you if you so for that you just need that domain expertise so you uh, ask the doctors and the scientists here you have the uh, uh, you have the domain expertise uh, you can take this technology and use it anywhere as if you have a data or if you can generate data if you know how to generate data then you can do that so for example if i say generate data so personalized uh, um, patient monitoring so how will you uh, do that so you can have some gadgets where the gadgets which will capture the uh, pressure the, the pulse rate all that uh, data um, and then you can take the patient's uh, blood data or the any other test rate reports using the you know, doing the manual testing if you uh, you collect all this data and then you what do you want to solve there what do you want to predict so it is just a matter of doing the modeling using this data and take the computer to process that and then uh, predict the future so the which which department or which specialization doesn't matter which which disease doesn't matter as long as you have data and if, if you know how to if you have the domain expertise to use that data and use this technology to solve the problem you can do that any area okay thank you and we'll I'll go through quickly the questions actually the, there is a special case there are we medical physicists use some treatment planning systems in the clinics for planning the treatment of radiation treatment of patients so in some of the you know the question asked by one of the you know here is one of the planning system they are using uh, some ai based solutions they are using the european patient data for indian patients so will it be accurate or it for uh, neural training we need to pull the patient data globally for such cases or is there any compromise in patient data privacy confidentiality when we try to do that so if a local database need to be readily built for uh, you know the, the for having some specialized cases where we wanted to do the you know the artificial intelligence based planning or treatment planning 
those kind of applications, specific applications. Okay, so since it was a long question, I'm not sure if I understood the question completely. So I'll try to answer that. And if after answering, if uh, you think that the question answer is not uh, proper, uh, then you can tell me again, and then I will uh, no, answer it again. So, oh, so what? So what the question? Is, was the yeah. question was in a different way? Since you are not from the no, no, no. medical. No, no, I, I, I got, I understood. I understood that. And um, so what I'm saying is, if the answer is not uh, sufficient enough, you can tell me again. Then I can explain again. So what we are trying to say is uh, we are using a, you know, certain artificial intelligence solutions is using the European data uh, in India for predicting that. So that is uh, ideally that is uh, not correct. But what happens is we need to start somewhere. So if you don't have any data, you cannot uh, use artificial intelligence there. So to start with, probably you that's why they are using the European data. But uh, gradually, after one year, after two years, you need to change from European data to Indian data because the Indian data patient demographics will be different, patient data vitals will be different, patient uh, personalized data, everything will be different. So you need to migrate from that European data to Indian um, data and then improve, retrain the models and uh, retrain the machine and uh, use that. Is that answering the question? Yes, I think that's right. Uh, that's okay. So we move Thank on to the next question. And uh, since AA will be in BA, we will be dealing with number of data or big data. How do you manage to avoid data traffic? And the second question is, will there be any system to manage those to avoid any data loss? Yeah, so there are two things. One is uh, how do we manage the data um, and then uh, how we avoid the data loss. And I will add uh, probably the data security, data privacy also because it's uh, related to healthcare. So usually how it does is um, you say in a hospital, you will have say n number of uh, uh, software systems and uh, servers, right? So if you are if you are working in a big hospital, you will have many, many computer solutions, patient data, you know, lab data. There will be so many systems. So what we do is uh, there is something called a big data, big data platform. So we there is that's a big uh, um, server systems cluster uh, which can handle terabytes or peta, petabytes of data. So you load all that data, transfer all that uh, or copy all that data from individual systems to this big data platform and then build artificial intelligence solutions on top of that. That's how we do. So there is no real time transfer needed and even if it's some in in some cases where you need a real time thing like um, uh, patient monitoring during a surgery and that you can there are technologies or interfaces where you can transfer the data without any data losses uh, but in most of the cases in a hospital or in any industry artificial intelligence uses uh, historical data say for example watson you know, watson will take the historical data of millions of patients and uh, uh, in, uh, in you know research data or journal data which is historical which you can transfer that all those data into load it into big data platform and then you can teach the machine there so you don't need a real time data there uh, only if you are monitoring a patient real time then you you may need but that also will be very limited data which you need the majority of the data will be on the big data platform so there there are uh, data streaming technologies uh, like uh, um, uh, in spark and many many technologies available in this uh, big data platform so mainly what it means is um, artificial intelligence it's a big data analytics there is a big data database big data platform where you load all the data and then build all the solutions on top of that so that's from the data point of view and then from a data privacy data security point of view so for example the hipaa how you apply the hipaa the privacy so we use uh, you know the encryption data encryptions and desk data masking and all those uh, you know, um, then end to end encryptions are there um, so all those uh, sec data security, privacy, all those need to be taken care of uh, as per the uh, law legal requirements. Now, whether it's uh, HIPAA or any of the other legal requirements, you need to take care of that. So that's a different aspect to which we need we can cover separately. Okay. There are uh, many more questions which are specific to the application of uh, radiation in medicine because regarding the solutions that we will be discussing in a separate uh, specialized talk maybe in the coming series of uh, coming series of this webinar so that would be a better approach to that so i thank i thank we thank you once again for uh, sharing your knowledge as well as opening the doors of health i mean the application of ai in healthcare 
And um, another thing I wanted to share with you is, as we know, this campaign has been grown to all the major continents with more than 300 participants for most of the webinars. So if you have a COVID-19 related protocol related to medical physics practices in your country or your institution, and if you wish to share that information with other participants, please send us those documents with us so that we will be able to share with all the participants around the world who are involved with this program now. Also, there had been a few more suggestions to renaming this campaign as a Medical Physics for Life webinars. So we will be reviewing that suggestions from many comments. So please use the review form and also the LinkedIn page to mark your comments. And once again, I thank uh, Matthew Joseph for supporting this campaign by volunteering his lecture and by, you know, irrespective of his busy schedule. I thank all the participants for your active participation and uh, I am sure we will try to answer all the questions that you have in the coming webinars so that we will be having more specific webinars in the coming weeks, which will be more specific to the specific fields as radiotherapy, radiation uh, imaging, and uh, medical physics. So we will be able to find answers for those topics and we are not stopping this discussion on AI here. And I welcome you all for the future webinars. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you very much and I appreciate, uh, uh, I mean, thank you for giving this opportunity and it was nice uh, speaking to all of you. Uh, appreciate if you can provide your uh, feedback about this session, whether you liked it, how it liked it, uh, you can write that feedback on the link, link which um, Dr. Saji will be circulating to all of you. Uh, I appreciate uh, if you can uh, write the detailed feedback, uh, that will help me. Thank you, all of you. Bye-bye. Thank you and goodbye. Have a good weekend. Same to you. Bye-bye.